such a perfect day. Animals in the zoo. And later, a movie too. And then home. Do, do. Oh, it's such a perfect day. I'm glad I spent it with you. What's up, everybody? We just got out of one of the most anticipated movies, for us at least, for the year. For, yep. And I'm assuming for a lot of people, Train Spotting 2, that's what I'm calling it. I'm not calling it fucking T2 Train Spotting, because there's no, uh, you know, Edward Furlong in this movie. Uh, this is the sequel to the 1996 film Train Spotting, which I know is one of my favorite movies of all time. And you, and you really like it. Twitter's been on this thing about your favorite movie from such years you were alive, and yeah. Train Spotting is my favorite movie from 1996. So, Me too. Yeah, I could call that my favorite. This is the sequel, released 21 years later, but it's still directed by Danny Boyle. Still has got the original cast. You always, you know, are nervous going into a film like this that is a sequel to a film that is a classic. You could make an argument that Train Spotting, Pulp Fiction, and Fight Club were the three most influential movies of the 90s. You're always nervous when they do a sequel. So, Daniel, what did you think of Train Spotting 2? This is probably one of the best sequels of all time. This movie is fucking awesome. This movie might be my favorite sequel of all time. I'm goes, actually kind of fucking blown away at how great this film I is. I couldn't go that far. But this movie is really pretty freaking great. Like, like, goddamn, is this movie fucking magic? Yeah, it, I was really impressed by. It. it seems like every sequel nowadays is just fucking nostalgia porn, fucking Jurassic World, Terminator Genesis, Ghostbusters bullshit. And this movie plays on that idea, the fact that nostalgia isn't the healthiest thing. You could have just gotten these guys back together, and I probably still would have enjoyed it. But they came up with a really great story for this. Uh, this is the Empire Strikes Back of heroin movies. <laughs> yeah. And I mean that not as, you know, not to reference the greatness of Empire Strikes Back, but in a way that the first movie tells a complete story, and this one feels like you're just continuing the character's stories on. And it's as natural, and it flows just as well. This movie brings back that feeling of seeing old friends you haven't seen in a long ass time. Yeah. Both the great bits, the terrible bits, and it all coalesces together, not only with the first one really well, but bringing up the commentary to modern day. Right. Back in the 90s, you know, this sort of nihilistic, sort of self-absorbed, and then eventually self-destructive sort of uh, story was really, like, it was really shocking at the time, and now you get to see it in a modern context. This one's not really about nihilism so much as it is about guilt and disappointment. Yeah, it was an update of that, and, you know, I'm not gonna spoil anything, but... With the self-destruction. The self-destruction continues. Yeah, Hugh McGregor is always solid yeah. uh, as an actor, not as a director. Um, so, you knew he was gonna be good, but I was curious how to see, like, the other guys, like Johnny Lee Miller, Ewan Bremer, and Robert... Robert Carlyle. Yeah, because I really haven't seen them in that many things. I thought they were all astounding, especially, I think, I think the standout was Johnny Lee Miller. John, all of them. They're, they're, I meant Empire Strikes Back in the sense that this is a movie that takes place 20 years later, and these characters fit like a glove. Yeah, it, like, it's it, like it's you, honestly kind of astonishing to see how well these guys work going to modern day one, yeah. aging the character, and evolving beyond where they start. I think it's some of the most fantastic writing yeah. in a long time. And God damned if Danny Boyle doesn't earn a director nomination for this. Because oh, this totally. is one of the greatest fucking things. I, the cinematography in this, I'll yeah. put the name here, it blows my mind. Yeah. Just the way he captures the speed of modern day, too. Yeah, it was very much shot in the same way as the original. Oh my god, the sound editing, sound the editing. mixing, Fantastic. putting it all together, the acting. Yeah. Just, god! It, HK viewers, if you've not seen the original Train Spotting, definitely go watch this. Um, but you don't need to see the original Train Spotting to see, get I, this movie. I think you do, because I think that it was such a rewarding thing. There were so many nods and references to the original. There are so many things that, like... Yes, 
but this is still a great movie without the original. I agree, but I think the the experience is so much more enhanced if you have seen the original because there's so much like great stuff in there for fans. Oh, sure, it's enhanced, but the mark of a great sequel is that it stands on its own. Yeah. And this movie not only stands on its own, but it exceeds every single expectation I had for it. All right, we're not gonna talk about this anymore without going into spoilers, so spoiler alert. If you're a fan of train spotting, if you don't want to know all the good juicy bits, scroll to the time code here for final thoughts and scores out of six stars. Otherwise, let's just get into it. If you've seen the original, you know the movie ends with Ewan McGregor, Renton, uh, stealing the money that they, they got from selling heroin and betraying his friends and choosing life. This movie picks up 20 years later where everybody's in. Everyone is exactly where you expect. Begbie's in jail. Yeah. Johnny Sick Lee, boy Sick is, Boy is, is just getting money any way possible. Yeah, he's black prostitution. Yeah, he's blackmailing the this dude. Who, who was he? He was, I think, the headmaster of some private school For, who likes getting pegged by fucking prostitutes with a strap on. With a and, fucking and, and strap. It's, on. Uh, he's he's hired this girl chick named Veronica. Yeah. Who I don't know this actress's name. Goddamn, best supporting actress. She's great. She's uh, she's fantastic. She's great because it was. I, I was curious because I thought that, you know, the main female role in this movie was going to be Kelly McDonald. Yeah. She just has a cameo. Spud is still a fucking loser because he's Spud. Well, Spud just back on heroin. I mean, the movie yeah. ends with, the first movie ends with Renton giving him 4,000 pounds. And if you, you give 4,000 pounds to a junkie, what the hell do you think he's going to do with it? Right. And so you see that, uh... Spud has a tragic backstory, too. It's kind of, he explains it in this kind of AA <laughs> meeting where he got the money became a junkie, then somehow got his shit together, construction, wife, family, then fucked it all up again, yeah. wife and kid left him, and he went back on the heroin. Yeah. Ewan Bremer just giving this incredible performance. Oh, yeah. He's like, he's like somehow, if one of the Stooges was a great actor. Yeah, because you always, I think in the original, you always, you always, Spud was always the character you felt, you know, even though the Renton, movie says it himself, Spud never hurt anybody. Yeah, Spud never hurt anybody. He's just kind of he's like he's like the young guy that you kind of like they, that they loop in on all of this, and you always you know kind of pity him. He's now a junkie again. He's trying to get his shit together. Also, Begbie breaks out of jail in the most incredible way possible. Begbie's break out of jail is nothing short of astonishing. Yeah, and. Had he been the lead in Jack Reacher, I would have totally accepted it. Not Robert Carlyle, Begbie. Yeah. I want Begbie in more movies. Oh, sure. What ends up happening is Ewan McGregor comes back to Edinburgh. He's been in Amsterdam for the past 20 years, basically avoiding everyone and everything. But then he kind of gets this nostalgia kick or sort of his midlife crisis and goes back yeah. to, I guess, out of his conscience, try to make things right with his friends. It's a fantastic shot of him at the table. He comes back home, yeah. sees that his dad's there, yeah. and they sit down, and the shadow from Ewan McGregor's uh, body reflects onto the chair where his mom used to be. Yeah. And that was the first shot that I knew that this movie was going to be something fucking magical. Yeah. Because the visual story Magical here, in, like, the sense of... No, like, legitimately genuinely magical. great, because that yeah. is... That Danny Boyle is a master at visual storytelling. Oh, yeah. Getting across so much information with just a glance. He's really... A filmmaker that's just makes it exciting to watch a movie. There's a lot of music montages. There's some great music oh, in here. Oh man! Um, so I loved the fact that they gave they, they they used some of the songs from the original. Obviously, uh, "Lust for Life," uh, "Perfect Day," "Perfect Day." It's not like in your face, like oh, remember the original? They they use it in the perfect context, like when they first when they use "Lust for Life," <laughs> when uh, <laughs> when um, Renton. And sick boy go to the Protestant. <laughs> that is one of the greatest scenes I have ever fucking seen. It's this incredible. Shall, scene. shall we say that no more Catholics left should get a best original song nomination? Yes, because I believe it should. There, sick boy ropes Renton into this uh, this, this business deal, this yeah. plot to take the old pub and renovate it, turn it into a brothel. Yeah, and because Renton's just Sauna, flamed out. Says. Yeah. And well, then, the sauna was the name of the place that Veronica used to work yeah. at. Yeah. And they want and the they, rival brothel. Yeah. And they want Veronica to be the headmistress there, or whatever. The madame. The madame. And so there's this point where they they go to this hardcore, you know, Prot Protestant I can't. bigotry. 
Like, it's like, Scotland's alt-right. Everyone is so into kind of getting together and being alt-right people yeah. that they won't notice whenever everyone steals their wallets. And so they get caught by the bouncer as they're about to leave and they're like, come on boys, why don't you sing a song there? And so they go, R Sick Boy only knows how to play two chords, <laughs> Retton's making up lyrics as he goes, and he comes up with this song the bar is united by this battle where the Protestants won and the Catholics lost, so every, they go to celebrate the Protestant victory. And he's just singing this song uh, <laughs> called No More Catholics Left. And it's, and it's just, just giant bar yeah, swing yeah, about They, they the totally battle. get on on this, and then they take the credit cards, and they all have the same pin, 16, so they go, <laughs> 1690. So they go and just take them all and cash them all out. Whenever you see Sick Boy and Renton kind of becoming friends again and really enjoying yeah. it, and Lust for Life is just blaring yeah. through, it is just the most fun. Yeah. God damn, if this movie wasn't just fucking fun. You see them go through this plot, you see Spud hired as sort of a contractor for the <laughs> brothel, and he gets his shit together, and there's this great scene where Renton's talking to Spud, and he's like, look, the way I beat addiction was I got addicted to something else. So Spud's getting addicted to writing his old stories down, yeah. and re reminiscing on memories with friends. He has all these photographs laid out from his ex that his ex-wife gave to him. And then Veronica and he start becoming a friendship, and then Veronica and Renton start fucking while Sick yeah. Boy thinks that she's in love with him, and Begbie just goes on a fucking bender. There's this part where he's trying to loop his son into helping yeah. him, and his son is trying to go to school. It's this great subversion of just the son disappointing the dad, but just because he doesn't want to be a fuck up like his father. Yeah, but and then there's like this really genuinely sweet moment at the end where it's uh, like I think the only sweet moment that Begbie's ever had. Yeah, where he goes and he's and he basically tells his son, "Be a better man than I was. Good luck." And even though he's about to go do something fucked up, you know, he's like, "I know who I am, but I want you to be different." And that was exactly. a, that was good stuff. The way that it ends, I think, is perfect. Yeah, I do too. The whole plot kind of comes to a boil whenever... Boil? <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> whenever Spud rats to Begbie saying that he knows where Renton is, and all four of them end up at the same pub. Which is the They're first time of... you see them all four together. That's true. It's all kind of the high and low points of nostalgia and Begbie just goes insane yeah. and tries to kill Renton because at this point that's the only thing he knows. It basically ends with Spud just like bashing Begbie in the head, them locking him in a trunk, leaving him back at the prison. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so he, nothing's changed for him. <laughs> nothing's changed for really anybody yeah. except, we'll say it in a minute, yeah. Sick Boy and Renton have made uh, this money, they've earned a hundred thousand pounds for a business, and then you find at the end that Veronica has duped all of them, yeah. taking half of the money for herself back home to where she lives, giving half the money to Spud's ex-wife and kid. Well, she gives it to Spud, but he wants to give it to his wife and kids. Spud shows his ex-wife all the stories that he's compiled together, and she goes, I think I found a title for it which makes the train spotting story meta yeah exist in this world right spud is the hero of train spotting yeah which makes completely perfect sense Renton doesn't deserve it. Yeah. Begbie will never change. Sick boy's a piece of shit. The only <laughs> one who's not a piece of shit is, is spud. spud. And if anyone's going to come out of this unscathed, really unscathed it deserves to be him. And you know what? It's a perfect ending. One that caught me by surprise, but you know what? It makes perfect sense. And I couldn't have think, thought of a better way to end this story. That's a play Radio Gaga. So if you scroll to the time code, welcome back to our non-spoiler thoughts on Train Spotting 2 and our scores out of six stars. So I gonna say we both love this movie yeah we're both massive fans of the original it was completely yeah. satisfying it's a perfect sequel it's a perfect companion piece it makes you view the original in a different light which i think is really interesting you still have the original it's still perfect and this is a the perfect continuation of it i want to say our scores i'm going to count down from three and we're going to say it three, three two, two 
one. Six out of six stars. Five and a half. I knew it. Why not the six though? Because the six, I think that there were a few parts in this movie where it was a little slow. Um, oh, you're right. And so that that's it, it wasn't. You know, I think it's perfectly constructed. I think it's almost perfectly written. There are a few parts that drag a little bit, and you don't know exactly their intention. So maybe when I see it again, you know, maybe that's something that will improve, but on an initial viewing, I'm gonna go five and a half. I was really confused at the third act of this movie because of all things, it turns into kind of like a slasher movie. When you think about it all together and you tie it back to the old story, and even on its own, it's one of those rare sequels that expands perfectly in just the right way. Like, this is just as Fuck. good the more, as Train The more I think about it, I think you're right. This is one of the best sequels that I think I've Seriously, ever seen. Seriously, this is just as good as the first one. For this story that relies on nostalgia and guilt and sort of the evolution of the suburban reject, it's perfect. Yeah. And. I fucking love it. This is a perfect sequel for people who love the original, but if you don't like the original, this movie isn't going to change your mind. It's Even if you haven't seen the original, if you're not really into very black gallows humor, yeah. then you might not be into this. But for those sick fucks like us who are, yeah. you're going to love it. So if you like this video, please click the like button down below. Also make sure to subscribe. You'd be the first to know about all the new content that we're producing. Make sure to like us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Mm -hmm. I've got a blog, liamamgahan.wordpress.com. Uh, Friend Noah is the Cinema Geek on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Anything else we need to plug? And this weekend, we're gonna go see Go Go Power Rangers! We might be going to see Life, the new space movie. With, I know I'm going to go with see With Jake Life. Gyllenhaal and Ryan Reynolds. We're not going to see Chips. Because fuck Chips. Fuck Chips. This next Monday is Halfcock's first birthday. Ba -ba -da -ba. We're going to celebrate. We're going to get cake. We're going to sit back with as many of the old fucks that we can and fit in this car and just go over our favorite moments, our worst moments, you know, kind of reflect on what we've got and maybe... Wax poetic about the future? I don't fucking know. Gotta lust for a life. Da, da, da. Gotta lust for a life. Gotta lust for a life. Gotta lust for a life. Diamonds! <laughs>